Here to explain the 20-minute F&I transaction is Tony Dupaquet, Director of the Academy at Service Group. Please give him a warm welcome. Hi, and welcome to the 20-minute F&I transaction. My name is Tony Dupaquet, Director of the Academy. Customers are telling us today that they want a faster overall transaction inside of the dealership. And all of the current studies are showing that customers have about a three hour transaction time in the purchase of their new vehicle. And where we need to be able to do things is tighten things up and make them shorter. Customers are telling us today that they want to spend no more than about 90 minutes in the purchase of their new vehicle. One of the things that we have to remember is customers today do a tremendous amount of research before they ever walk into the dealership. And they know about the vehicle, they know about their trade, they know about the payments, they know about rates, and they know all of this, and they have a certain level of expectation. But what do they know about the F&I process? What do they know about F&I products? For the most part, they don't. They haven't been able to research those products. They haven't been able to research that entire financial transaction. And this makes that entire transaction a little bit longer because we have customers today that want to do business to now. Not today, not now, it's actually to now. And one of the biggest bottlenecks that we see in the dealership, well, it's in the business office. It's that F&I transaction. And that is what we're addressing today in the 20-minute F&I transaction. What can we do to help speed up that entire transaction? So when we look at the holdups in the business office itself, why, why do we have those slowdowns? Well, in some cases, the deal's not closed. For one reason or another, customer goes into the business office, they already have certain expectations in their mind, they get in there, and maybe that deal's not completely closed. Now, depending on your dealership, this can or may or may not be able to be rectified. But one of the biggest pieces that we find that we have problems in the F&I transaction is just the accuracy of the information. Think of all the information that needs to go into a transaction to make sure that it goes down properly. We obviously need all the customer information, the vehicle information, the credit information. We have all the legalities. We have all the different pieces there. And the accuracy of that information is critical in today's transaction in the business office to be able to speed it up and tighten up that entire transaction. Plus, we have to look at a few other things. The amount of paperwork. We look at some deals that have up to 43 pieces of paperwork in the deal. 43 pieces of paper. The amount of products that are being sold in today's business office. Here at the Academy, we see dealerships that have up to 13 F&I products being sold. 13. And that turns into a very long and lengthy presentation. And there's things that we can do about it. We have objections from customers. When a customer objects to purchasing a product, again, that makes that transaction just a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And of course, we have the amount of compliance. Compliance is a necessity in today's marketplace. So we have to have a good, legal, profitable, moral process. We always have to take care of that compliance. These are a lot of the issues that we see today that makes the entire transaction, but more specifically that transaction in F&I, a lot longer. And today on the 20-minute F&I transaction, we're going to show you ways and tips to be able to tighten it up and ways we can shorten up that time in a good, legal, profitable, moral way. One of the nicest and easiest things that we can do for all of our customers is to start as much as the transaction online as possible. Now, dealerships today, obviously, we have a finance tab on our website, and we need to start pointing our customers to that finance tab. The problem is, it says finance. Well, if I'm paying cash for a vehicle or I'm using my own bank or outside finance source, do I really need to go to that finance tab? No, not really. So we need to start pointing our customers to that part of our website. And we can just do things nice and easy, like change the name of the tab to complete purchase here, start your transaction here, reduce your overall time in the dealership right here. And we can start pointing the customer to that tab. And once they get there, we can have additional information. Obviously, a credit application is very predominant today. That's great. Glad that you have it. 
We want to be able to have the customer start that transaction, put in all their non-public personal information, all the information that they need for loan approval. Let's start it online. So when we have a customer who's already agreed to purchase a vehicle today or has already agreed to purchase it online, we can start emailing them or sending them the link to go to the Complete Purchase Here tab on our dealership website. But once they get there, we need to have more than just a credit application. When we look at today's marketplace, customers today, we could certainly look at it from the Gen Y millennial customer base, but come to find out it's all customers bases today. They enjoy and are striving for self-education. In the past, Self-education and education about F&I products was non-existent unless you were in the business office talking to a business manager. F&I, that business office, has been the black hole of the dealership for years. Information goes in, no information ever comes out. With today's customer bases, we need to allow that information out because customers today want to self-educate themselves about everything. They're already self-educating themselves about the vehicle. You look at the different surveys, depending on the ones you look at, customers are spending between 10 and 14 hours researching purchasing a vehicle before they ever walk in. It's because they self-educate. What we can do at the dealership level is allow the customers to start educating themselves about F&I products. And the easy way to do this is has your, have your business manager or maybe even your product provider create informational videos and F&I influencers that we can put directly onto the website. Some of the most successful dealerships in the F&I that are doing this are reporting up to 29% of their customers walking in asking for F&I products and we never offered them. The reason is because the customer self-educated themselves on the dealership website. With easy product videos about service contracts and the great benefits of service contracts or the advantages of financing at the dealership as opposed to paying cash or going outside finance. The benefits of GAP purchase at the dealership as opposed to purchase at their insurance company. And these videos don't need to be very elaborate. They don't need to be shot professionally. They can be shot on just a simple cell phone put onto the dealership website or onto one of the online sources out there for videos. It's easy enough to do. But more importantly, when we direct the customer to that Purchase Now tab on your website, we can allow that self-education to happen naturally, and that's what customers like. They are requesting the F&I products when they're able to self-educate, but here's the cautionary piece. We don't want to force the video education. And what's the difference? Today's customers like to have it happen organically. They found it themselves, they got to watch the videos and find the information on their own pace. In some cases, dealerships have gone where they force the education inside the dealership on a tablet or on a video or on a monitor of some form or fashion. And what we're finding is some very negative results. Customers like to find it themselves and do it at their own pace. When we force the education, we don't see the desired results as we would expect. And when we don't see the desired results, objections come up, that entire transaction gets a lot longer. And that's the whole point here. What can we do to shorten up and quicken up the entire F&I transaction? 91% of all customers today make payments on their vehicle. Now, the payments could be made by finance sources at the dealership, it might be their own bank or credit union, or they may be doing a residual-based financing program, or otherwise known as a lease. But 91% of the customers make payments. Only 9% are actually paying their hard-earned cash for a vehicle today. So what does that tell us? That tells us that 91% of our customers are mostly interested in a payment when purchasing their new vehicle. So what we don't want to do is have our customers have to start all over when they enter into the business office. We do see some dealerships that continuously work on a trade difference or a drive out amount to close the deal. And then once they enter the business office, the customer has to start all over and start talking about the payments. The recommendation to again, shorten up the overall transaction at the dealership level, 
Go with a fully disclosed customer option plan where we can show them the price, the trade allowance, the sales tax title and licensing, show them a drive out, show them a down payment, and even a monthly payment because there are very good legal, ethical, moral ways to do this. And a lot of providers have those electronically built probably already inside your dealership. Because when the deal is closed on payments, or the customer at least has the availability of seeing what the payments are going to be, it doesn't make the customer start over once inside the business office. Because if we don't tell them the payments, the customer is going to calculate the payments themselves, whether that's on an app on their phone or even your dealership website. And remember, legal compliance is always a must. And when we're doing payments, showing payments and down payments and monthly payments or lease terms, and when we have those triggering terms, we need to make sure that we have a good legal compliance way of offering those. So please check with your providers. Another big piece. Too many times business managers are spending entirely too much time entering in all the deal information, when a lot of this could have been done by the sales staff, the sales department, and the sales managers. In a very informal survey, just working inside of dealerships, we were noticing that business managers were spending approximately 15 minutes per deal entering in information making sure the information was accurate and then having to change it and then finding all the additional documentation to put the entire car deal together. So if we can have our sales department load as much of the customer information and vehicle information, this will tighten some things up. In addition to that, sales managers always need to load in the deal structure. And what we mean by this is, when we have a business manager receive a deal and the only thing they have on that piece of paper or the deal or maybe just on the inside deal jacket is a payment, the business manager doesn't necessarily know exactly what needs to be done, what the price was, what the trade allowance was, what the cash down was. They don't have any of the information. Business manager has to get up, go talk to the sales managers. How did they put the deal together? So if the sales managers load all of the deal structure, once again, it allows the business manager to do their job more effectively, more importantly, saving time in the business office and saving time for your customers. Now, for all of this to happen effectively, we have to have 100% accurate information. When we look at accurate information, that means we have the correct name and the correct address that they actually reside in. Their birth date, a driver's license, an insurance card, and all the other information off of the new vehicle they're purchasing, including the miles, and the trade that they may be selling back to the dealership. Having that accurate information is critical in today's marketplace to make a shorter entire transaction. It's unfortunate of how often business managers and F&I managers have to go out and redo paperwork because of simple inaccuracies in an address. This all can be done by training and working with the sales department and the sales managers and everybody holding each other accountable to make sure the accurate information is always in there and make sure that all that information is in the deal folder when it enters the business office. Because a lot of times a business manager will not continue on with that transaction until all the documentation is in the folder itself. We're starting to see with a digital age the availability of electronic deal folders. One of the great things about electronic deal jacket or deal folder, number one is a compliance issue. It makes sure that we have a driver's license that's valid and an insurance card, and there's certain compliance aspects that can go along with it. And that's great. Compliance is always a must. But where the entire transaction can be faster is if we digitize all that information, it just allows the business manager to see it all. Everything got put into the electronic deal jacket accurately and allows the entire process to go quicker. And as time moves forward, these type of availabilities are going to be more robust. And it doesn't just have to be the legal and financial documents. A lot of dealerships today have inside, dealer, inside dealership documents, whether it is social media documents or photo releases, it could be payoff forms. Most of those can be digitized and put into these formats. Once again, making a faster transaction. In a lot of cases, the customers actually enjoy signing off on a tablet in today's marketplace. 
Something else that we find often at the academy is that we have electronic menus in the business office that do not necessarily talk back to the DMS or to the CRM system in the dealership. Whatever system that you're using, let's make sure that all that information inside the DMS or the CRM can actually be transferred into the electronic menu system with a high degree of accuracy. In addition to that, your F&I products. Does your electronic menu actually allow the rating of those products or do your business managers have to close a window, open up another window, log into an entirely different system to rate the products, find the rating, the right pricing, then put it back into the electronic menu? Every keystroke is additional time that is being spent. That, that time could actually be spent talking eye to eye with a customer. So little things like this, and that's the way we need to look at it. How many different ways can we shave 5, 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds off of every aspect of the F&I transaction? And if you have an electronic menu that will actually push back into your DMS system, you're in the bonus there. As we brought up the electronic deal folder, can we have a lot of that F&I paperwork digitized? In most cases, yes. There are the availabilities of that in today's market. It is becoming more available. So you don't want to invest in it, and that's fine. We just want to stick with the old-fashioned deal folders. Not a problem. There's a great way to handle this. To make the transaction go faster, have your business managers or business managers watching this create deal packets. Now, what I mean by that is, in most business offices, we have one, two, or three drawers that have all the paperwork. So when a customer comes in, we look at the deal. This is a new car with a trade, with a payoff. And now they have to start thinking all the paperwork that they have to have in that deal. So they open up drawer number one, they go from one side to the other side, they open up drawer number two, they go through that drawer, they open up drawer number three, it's got the big contracts in it. And they have to remember all the paperwork. Well, to quicken up the entire transaction, business managers in the few spare moments of time you do have during the day and during the week, create deal packets for all the different types of scenarios. As an example, you have all the paperwork for a new vehicle with a trade in a payoff and you have 10 of those on demand all the time. You have 10 new cars without a trade, you have all the paperwork. Same thing for used vehicles because if it's a pre-owned vehicle or possibly a demo, we're going to need to have an as-is buyer's guide in there. Have all that paperwork in there. It does a couple of things. One, it makes that entire transaction go faster. Two, it helps reduce the likelihood of you missing or forgetting an important piece of documentation for either deal funding or just from a payroll aspect. So put small deal packets together and have 10 on demand at all time. It makes your life a lot easier. Something else that it seems to be working very well is to have a document processor available. Now this is another human being that you hire into your dealership and granted, I'm not trying to have anybody spend more money on payroll. However, a document processor is an easy hourly wage type of position, maybe paid a small percentage of the F&I gross. But what the document processor's primary responsibility is to do just this, process the documents, print all the documents. The business manager sells the products and takes care of the transaction. Then all the paperwork goes back to the document processor to be able to go through and finalize the deal. What this allows is your business manager to be most effective at what we really need them to be effective. Taking care of the legal compliance of the F&I transaction and obviously selling the F&I products. Let the business managers focus specifically on what we need them to do and then pass off some of that somewhat clerical work back to the document processor. Interesting note on document processors. We have found dealerships that have embraced the document processor position. They are starting to home grow their own new business managers and F&I managers for the future. It's something new, it's something revolutionary, but we're taking sometimes these document processors that we're not familiar with the automobile industry, let alone F&I, but because of understanding the paperwork and knowing what needs to happen and being involved in the transaction, 
Next thing we know, we have our next generation of business managers already built right inside of our dealership through the document processors. Another piece that I recommend to help tighten up that entire transaction is pre-print as many of the documents as possible prior to ever talking to the customer. Now the biggest argument here is, well, what if we don't have accurate information? You're right, that's a problem. But like we spoke about earlier, if we teach and train our salespeople and our sales managers to make sure that we have 100% accurate information going into the business office, it eliminates the concern of pre-printing all the documents. Because right here, we're working on effectiveness and more important, speed of the transaction. Most business managers could spin through and pre-print all that paperwork probably in three minutes or less in their office by themselves just getting into the groove. And that's a lot faster than print, present, disclose, sign. And then print another, show, present, disclose, sign. Very, very slow. Pre-print all the documents prior to ever introducing yourself to the customer. Now, there's a few documents we're not going to sign, we're not going to pre-print. We're not going to pre-print a retail installment sales contract. We're not going to pre-print uh, pre any F&I products. We don't know necessarily what the customer is going to purchase today. We uh, are not going to print any type of declination form or final menu, depending on what you call it. But other than that, most of your state, legal, dealership forms for purchasing the vehicle can be pre-printed before we ever see the customer, as long as we have good, 100% accurate information into the system. Another big piece is having the business manager engage with the customer outside of the business office. Now, there's a couple of great reasons to do this just from a rapport building standpoint. It's already in the customer's comfort zone. But more importantly, once the business manager has engaged with the customer, the business manager do not disengage. That's one of the biggest time holdups is that in the past, it was very, very popular to go out the business manager, go talk to the customer, do a little bit of an interview, then excuse themselves, I'll be right back, I'm gonna go put some of your paperwork together, and now all of a sudden they're doing the paperwork. There's a major danger factor here because as soon as we disengage, the customer goes cold. And when the customer's just sitting there, they start doing this. And they start investigating and looking up things. Once we engage, do not disengage. And with that, the salesperson should not disengage from the customer. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't want the, necessarily want the salesperson to stay with the customer in the business office during that transaction. But once the business manager is involved, Sales department goes a different direction, but that salesperson must stay available 100% of the time. One of the easiest hints that can be done is that your business manager has text messaging or messaging capability back to the salesperson. So if we need something all of a sudden or the customer's ready to come out of the business office, we can text them and they can be there on demand. Sales department do not just vaporize once the business manager is in. Most of the transaction can actually happen on the showroom floor. The reason is we have these new electronic tablet menus. It used to be the business office had to be in this controlled environment with a printer and it had a computer. Today, the CRM, the DMS, the electronic menus, again, if we digitize the paperwork, we go to electronic deal folders, for the most part, that is all on a tablet. It's all web-based. We don't necessarily need to be chained into the business office. So from a comfort level for the customers and also a little bit of a perception level for your customers, we can handle most of the transaction outside of the business office, out there on the showroom floor, in the salesperson's office, or that politically correct round desk that's out there. Because one of the pieces we have to remember is that in the customer's mind, the clock starts when they actually walk into the business office and sit down. When they do that, that's when the clock starts. So even if we're not going to take the entire transaction outside, we certainly want to start it outside. Business manager greets the guest, and when they're out there, they got some important duties, and then we can transfer. But before we transfer, 
One of the most important things for a business manager to do is verify all the accurate information that this is the customer's name, their address, all of their information, the vehicle information. We can do that simply outside. In addition to that is to verify their commitment to buy. So regardless of how your dealership closes that car deal, whether it's a trade difference, a price, a, a drive out, a down payment payment, before we transfer the customer into the business office and we go any further, the business manager must confirm the commitment to purchase, that they're purchasing the vehicle and they've purchased it for these terms and they're taking delivery today. Because one of the biggest holdups we will find in the business office is that deal's not closed and those surprises in the business office are very costly in time. And when that business manager can't get out to go to the next customer, this starts stacking up. And when it starts stacking up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, there's a lot of unhappy people at that point in time. The business manager, the sales manager, the salesperson, but most importantly, the customer. We need to be able to eliminate or reduce the amount of objections. And the way that we can do it is to make the entire presentation about them, them being the customer. Too many presentations that customers are not connecting with are about the business manager. We wanna make presentations about the customers. And the way that you can do this is by asking them the one question. And it's simply like this. When the business manager engages, after we verify, we simply ask them, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, why did you choose this vehicle? Why did you choose this car, truck, van, sport, utility crossover? Why did you choose it? Every customer has done so much research, there's a reason they're purchasing this one individual vehicle. Every answer that they could possibly give to this one question will give you, as the business manager, their emotional connection and their emotional motivation to purchase this vehicle. More importantly, we can utilize this to be able to make our presentations about F&I products based off of their emotions. When we ask them, what made you choose this vehicle? Because every answer will fall into one of seven categories. It'll fall into safety, technology, appearance, convenience, kinetics, which is performance, economy, or dependability. Every single customer will give you at least one, if not two, up to three answers when you ask this question. And the customer just told you at that point in time what their emotional connection is. We can utilize that emotional connection now to offer them F&I products. Because this one question creates what we call the yes. And when we create the yes, the customers buy from us. Yes is simply this. That's an acronym for you earlier said. So when we're talking to a customer and we ask them, what made you choose this one? And they tell us, well, it was the technology. I liked all the navigation and the automatic cruise control and the auto braking and the blind spot indicators. That's great. Now we know that their emotional is technology, so when we go to talk about F&I products, we wanna talk about F&I products that will maintain and possibly fix that technology when they have a problem. Once we use the yes, the acronym for the seven primary buying motives, their emotional piece, that is stacked, S-T-A-C-K-E-D, stacked. And we combine these two to make the presentations about the F&I products specifically tailored to the customers. Because Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you earlier said that the technology was important and that's why I have a vehicle service contract for you. This will fix your car when the car breaks. More importantly, when that technology has a problem, this is gonna go ahead and pay to make sure that it's all taken care of, that make sure that your family is safe, all with a small out-of-pocket deductible. Most importantly, it'll keep that technology working for you just the way you intended it. It allows us to make presentations about the customer utilizing their emotions. And what this does is substantially reduce the amount of objections from a customer. The objections a lot of times in F&I come from the 
The customer didn't have the ability to research these F&I products. And now a business manager is talking to them about fixing the car or in the event of a total loss or if they die or something like that. And all of a sudden, their objections start coming up. By asking them the one question, utilizing the yes, and their stacked answer, it reduces the amount of objections because the presentations are about them and not about the business manager. And when we reduce the objections, it reduces the overall time in the business office, and that's what this is about. How can we get that F&I transaction into 20 minutes? Put a little bit of paperwork into play, ask them the run one question, and again, reduce or virtually eliminate out objections. Another important piece, Let's identify who the customers are. Now, this is nothing more than simple psychology. It's a little bit of science, and we like that. But we can break up our customers roughly into five segments. 10% of our customers are the A customer, where they walk in, they are happy, they are excited, and regardless of what you have to offer, they're probably going to buy it. I like that. Don't even have to do much of a presentation. They walk in, hey, do you have that service contract? I want some of that gap. Tell me more about this. I want some of it. 10% of our customers are the A. The B customer, that's 20% of our customers. They're very, very similar to the A, but they like to see the show. There's no business that's not show business, and in our industry, we're all in show business. And the B customers enjoy seeing the show. The, they like to see, they like to have the conversation, they like to see the full presentation, and they're going to buy. B customers ask questions. They don't really fought, throw a lot of objections, but they do ask questions. So be very, very mindful, business managers. Listen specifically to what a customer is saying. Are they giving you an objection or are they asking you a question? If a customer asks you a question, answer it. A lot of times business managers will miss the opportunity with a B customer because that customer asks a question, but the business manager responds to them like it was an objection, major foul. The C customer is the middle of the road. That's 40% of our customers out there. The influencer with your C customer is your F&I process. It's the process out there on the floor, but in the business office that we're sp talking about specifically, it's your process. The process is the influencer. D customers are kind of the difficult ones. It's not that they're difficult because they're a difficult customer, because a D customer is just like a B customer. They like to see the show. The difference is they do throw objections, and they throw a lot of questions. And even when you overcome the objection, a D customer, this is an easy identifier. They tell you, no, they don't want to buy something. You ask them why. They give you a, an exact objection. You respond effectively to that exa exact objection, and you end it with, so wouldn't it only make sense for you to purchase the product today? And the D customer goes, yeah, it does. I'm still not buying it. And that's not a lot of fun. D customers will drive you crazy. They're the, they're the customer that you kept thinking, I got it, I'm gonna close this deal, I got this customer, I'm gonna do it, and they end up not buying. More importantly, they took way too much of your time. Easy rule of thumb, power of threes. We ask the customer to buy three times. We ask them to buy, they tell us no, we ask them why, we overcome that objection. We can try it once, maybe twice, now we've asked three times. Once we've asked a customer to buy three times, it's time to move on. Easy identifier for the Ds, beware. And then there's the F customer. The F customer accounts for approximately 10% of our customers. They're relatively easy to identify. Is that they walk in and they look at you as a business manager and say, I'm not buying any of this stuff. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste my time. I've been doing it. I don't want any of this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, we, still have, we are still legally obligated, Equal Credit Opportunity Act, Regulation B, to offer every product to every customer every time because it does revolve around a credit transaction. We still have to offer it. But here's the hint, folks. When you've identified an F customer, know what you're dealing with, make sure you offer your products, but you know what? It's time to move on. We need to concentrate 
on the bigger picture. We have the A's. The B's are relatively easy. You work your process to capture more and more of the C's. Identify the D's and allow the F's to move along. And when you can identify the customer, it allows your entire transaction to go much, much faster. Once we're in the business office, if you transfer into the business office, this is when the clock starts. Now we're on the clock. So we might have talked to them outside a little bit. We already pre-printed our information. Now we walk them into the business office. Most importantly, hand the customer a pen. Hand them a pen. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, here's a pen for you. You will be signing a lot of documents. You know what? Don't be afraid to even count up the amount of documents a customer has to sell. And yes, or has to sign, even if it's 43 documents. You need to let them know. Set the expectations. Hand them a pen. And then let the customer know. We have several documents for you to sign. I'm going to disclose each one of the documents. I will point where you need to sign. You just need to sign it. I'll make sure that you have your copies because we actually counted. It took approximately 10 seconds for a customer to sit up, pick up a pen, sign the document, put the pen down, sit back in their chair. 10 seconds. Where all of a sudden, if they stayed up, we disclosed, we're talking two seconds. Eight seconds times 43 documents. And we wonder why the transaction gets longer. It's just in control in the customer. Let's just tell them and set the expectations up front and ahead of time. Have a paperwork sequence. If you downloaded the NADA 100 app, all of the slides are for this presentation are available for download. In there is a paperwork sequence that you can modify based off of your state and your dealership that gives a very specific order of doing the paperwork. Now, most dealerships have a checklist, but unfortunately, that checklist normally falls under. We put a check and we draw a line, but nobody actually verified that those documents are in there. When you put a level of consistency, the consistency adds speed to your transaction. The recommendation is this. We do every piece of paperwork with every customer in the exact same order every single time. The consistency is speed. And that's what we're looking for. But more importantly, follow a paperwork sequence. And there's no, long, there's no need for any long, drawn-out explanations of each individual piece of paper. We do not need to have a two-and-a-half-minute dissertation of what an odometer statement is. It's as simple as, this is your federal odometer statement saying that your new vehicle has 19 miles on it and needs you to sign here. More importantly, business managers... Point your pen, no ink, but point your pen, preferably with a shiny tip, on the line for them to sign. Once the customer's pen hits the line, move your pen. It allows them to see where they sign, reduces the amount of confusion, and truly eliminates the, ne the necessity of reprinting paperwork because the customer signed on the wrong line. It makes it easy, and it makes it a lot faster but there's no need for long drawn out explanations of every single piece of paper. Even in the vocabulary that we use can actually help speed up the entire transaction because we see a lot of business managers go through very long in-depth transition statements to get into their menu. It can be as simple as, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you can certainly take delivery of your vehicle at this rate, at this payment, at this term. You're more than welcome to take delivery. However, based off some of the things you earlier said, there may be a better way for you to enhance your purchase experience and or upgrade your purchase of your new vehicle today. So we don't need long, drawn-out transition statements in the business office. Let's just make it very matter-of-fact. But instead of trying to sell them something, Let's talk to them about upgrading their purchase or enhancing their ownership experience based off some of the things the customer brought up. In addition to that, when we're making presentations on the products, make them about the customer like we talked about earlier. We utilize the yes, Mr. and Mrs. Customer you earlier said. We reference back to the stacked answer that the customer gave us, and then when we're doing our presentation on our products, let's just make it very simple. What it is, 
what it does and what it does for the customer. And once again, we don't need long, drawn out, seven, eight minute presentations of F&I products because now the customer's just seeing you're just trying to talk them into something. But when we utilize the yes combined with the stack, we can simply tell them, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I have a vehicle service contract here for you. You earlier said you plan on keeping the vehicle for a long time. You're driving 20,000 miles a year, and as you know, your factory warranty is going to run out in a short amount of time. The service contract, this is what fixes your car when the car breaks. It makes sure that it always has the right parts and the right technicians working on it, but more importantly, making sure that that vehicle is dependable just the way you want it to be. When you can personalize a presentation, make it short and sweet, and put it directly into the customer's mind based off of them, once again, the objections go down and the buy rate goes up, and that's what we're looking for. Because anything we can do to reduce and or eliminate objections is important and critical for a quicker and more compact F&I transaction. And I know that there's a lot of time people will bring out brochures in their presentations. Don't necessarily agree with that. In my opinion, brochures should be used to answer questions and for handling, obviously, objections. But utilizing it in presentation is not always the most effective manner in today's marketplace, especially when they'd like to be in and out of the dealership in 90 minutes or less. And if you're looking for something very different in a different direction, look into hybrid F&I. Hybrid F&I, somewhat controversial, but in the right circumstances is highly effective, is the same person sells the vehicle and the F&I products. Now, I will be the first person to tell each and every one of you, hybrid is not for every dealership, it is not for every franchise, and it is not for every market. But in the right circumstances, hybrid is highly effective because in most car dealerships, it's, it's two closes. We close one on the vehicle and we have a second close that is the F&I products. In hybrid, we can make it one. So at one time, we're selling the vehicle, fully disclosing the F&I products and asking the customer to buy, once again, as a package in a way to enhance their purchase experience. But like I said, hybrid's not for everybody. But in the right circumstances, it is a wonderful, extremely customer-centric type of process. High CSI, good profitability, but something very different. Now, with this being said, with hybrid, contrary to popular belief, it does not eliminate the F&I or business manager in today's dealership. But please, look into hybrid in the right circumstances. So to wrap it all up, to have that 20-minute F&I transaction, let's allow some pre-exposure of F&I products via your dealership's website. Let them find the videos and let it happen organically. Don't make the customer start over. If we have customers that are buying on payments, let's make sure that they have a good understanding of the payments before they walk into the business office. Have your sales department load 100% of the deal. The sales managers load the deal structure with 100% accurate information prior to hitting the business office. Digitize as much of the paperwork as possible. Again, there's a lot of different methods to have this happening today. If we're not going to digitize it, pre-print as much of the paperwork as possible prior to ever talking directly to the customer. Once F&I engages with the customer, they do not disengage. And also make sure that sales department, that salesperson maintains contact with that customer and with the business manager. And they just don't vaporize once F&I has the customer. Ask them the one question to eliminate objections and to personalize those presentations. Identify what type of customer that we're dealing with today. Follow the exact same paperwork sequence every single time and even utilize a checklist. Move away from selling and allow the customers to upgrade their, their purchase experience and make those presentations more about the customer and less about the business manager. And in some cases, explore hybrid F&I. That's what it takes to have a 20-minute F&I transaction. It's coordination, engagement, asking the one question, utilizing the yes.
For everyone here at NADA 100, my name is Tony Dupaque, and thank you for watching the 20-minute F&I transaction.